The Three World Empire, otherwise simply known as the Empire, was one of a few major human federations within the alien universe, alongside the United Americas and the Union of Progressive Peoples. The Three World Empire saw the coalition of two main country states, Japan and the United Kingdom, as well as a collection of emerging nations throughout most of Europe and even that of Australia. However, despite the three uh, collections of countries, that is not where the name originated, instead being the result of further colonization into Sol, or our solar system. Today I wanted to explore everything we know about this world superpower and recount their colourful history amongst the stars of the Middle Heavens. After the establishment of the Empire in the year 2088, this world government was quick to secure most of the habitable or near habitable regions across our solar system of Sol. They had large control of Earth, having sizable control of the continents of Europe and Oceania, and to a lesser extent Asia, in the form primarily of Japan and India. This led to the Three World Empire creating and holding a number of the first stellar and interstellar colonies. They secured territory on the Moon, Mars, and even the moon of Saturn called Titan. And because of their extensive territory and control on Earth, Mars, and Titan, this federation quickly became known as the Three World Empire. Past Sol, the Empire would eventually go on to quickly capture most of the surrounding areas of the core systems, establishing dozens of colonies and moving out into the Outer Veil as far as they could before it was largely captured by the UPP. In addition, they attempted to secure assets within the Outer Rim and Frontier whilst in constant competition with the United Americas. By the end of their colonization age, they had successfully managed to take control of the areas of space such as a large majority of the Sol Sector, Sector 955, uh, the Neroid Sector, Sector 3947, the Hyperdyne Sector, and with this, their collective regions of space would come to be known as the Anglo-Japanese Arm, with notable worlds and colonies under their control, being those ones such as Graham's Foley, uh, Fiorina 161, Lena 349, and John Eve Station, located within Proxima Centauri. Bolstered by the pre-existing achievements of the nations of Great Britain and Japan, and the companies beneath them, in the form of Wayland Corp and the Utani Corporation, respectively, the Three World Empire used this groundwork of space exploration to quickly spread into the Middle Heavens region of space and to dominate a vast amount of it, as well as maintaining their strongholds here in Seoul. With access to near unlimited resources, the Three World Empire quickly became very wealthy and immensely powerful. And after the merger of the two prior companies into Wayland Jutani Corporation, major advancements in various technologies and much more found its way into the hands of the Empire. The government and the Mega Corporation would become so intertwined that Wayland Jutani would even have a permanent seat in the Empire's Parliament, alongside other member states of the Empire. In basic terms, the company made the Empire powerful and wealthy, and the Empire in turn provided protection, support, and territory for Wayland Jutani to operate within. They developed a quick ally in the form of the United Americas that came about 15 years after the formation of the Three World Empire. Aggressive expansion attempts made by both sides did sometimes cause excess tension between the two factions, who watched each other's borders very closely. However, they did support each other, especially in humanitarian and military operations on a regular basis, and were able to use each other's territory for legal travel with little problem. Unlike the United Americas, the Three World Empire lacked a fighting force on something of the level of the United States Colonial Marine Corps. However, the Three World Empire's formidable navy, advanced technologies and mercenary assets gave the United Americas something to respect and something to fear. The Three World Empire's uh, close relationship to Wayland yutani though, would often put uh, the Empire in a crossfire between the company and the UA, with these conflicts becoming more and more frequent, as unease along the frontier of explored space and other agendas went against each others. And whilst it seems that there could eventually be armed conflict between the two human federations, 
The Empire would desire to maintain peaceful relations for the best collective interest of the entire Middle Heavens region. However, despite the Three World Empire and the UA's quarrels, they had a definite enemy for the most part in the Union of Progressive Peoples. This enemy was shared with the UA, and was the major competition that existed for the Empire. The Union remained in a state of Cold War with the Empire for most of their mutual existence, as each attempted to secure further territory in the Outer Rim. Similar to the dominant countries that formed the Empire, the Empire's political uh, system was a parliamentary democracy overseen by a constitutional monarch. The monarch was a formation of the two royal families of Great Britain and the royal families of Japan. The two monarchical powers consolidated into one as the governments formed in the same way, and the royal families began to see marriages between the two. This united empire monarch became the leader state for the empire, but much like the states before it, it had very little ruling power. Power was instead driven into the political arena of elected parliament officials consisting of members from each state or country and including representatives from even that of Wayland Jitani. Much like the government of uh, Britain or Australia, the parliament was led by a prime minister. This form of government jurisdiction was responsible for ruling and regulating their territory in Seoul, as well as the large majority of their extrasolar colonies and stations throughout the Anglo-Japanese arm. An exception uh, came in the form of the worlds closer to the heavily unexplored frontier regions of space. Here the Empire's worlds would be placed under the control of a short-term provisional governor, largely due to these worlds uh, being newer and more isolated from the rest of colonised uh, space in the Middle Heavens region. In terms of the military organisation of the Empire, we can compare it largely to that of the United Kingdom. And while the fighting forces and infantry of the Empire was nothing particularly special and rather lacklustre when compared to the colonial marines of the United Americas, their navy on the other hand was much the opposite. Keeping with the empires that had came before it, the Three World Empire maintained a powerful navy force in the galaxy, with this probably being the most impressive naval force in the Middle Heavens during the 22nd century. Not only due to its size, but also attributed to its technological superiority to its rivals and allied factions, thanks in part to Wayland Yutani. As we begin to explore the nature of the Empire's infantry and ground forces, we find a less impressive specimen. Their army was small and consisted largely of a sole entity known as the uh, Royal Marines Commandos. Now while these commandos were the most elite, well trained and cunning soldiers matched with the most effective and advanced weaponry, they were also very small in numbers when compared to something like the Colonial Marines. The Empire simply lacked the ground soldier military scale to protect every single one of their worlds from threats on the ground or even from their own population, like rebel insurgencies. Maybe in the core systems, but less and less so as you moved out into their more distant territory. Because of this fact, the Empire enlisted through treaties and contracts the assistance of the United Americas and their colonial marines to help secure the colonies and stations closer to the frontier. And although this was the case, on key worlds of importance and at Wayland yutani areas of interest, the commandos were bolstered by the presence of Wayland yutanis own private military commandos, or PMCs. As stated, the Empire was the first of the three major human federations to rise from the conglomerate of nations forming and taking sides by the end of the 21st century on Earth. This occurred in the year 2088. And this empire quickly became the most powerful government body and sole nation in human history. After forming the empire, it now consisted of the nations, colonies, assets, and a few smaller colonies in the Middle Heavens regions uh, before borders there had really time to establish. This meant that the empire snatched up a lot of resource-rich worlds and territory before any other federation had a chance to get their feet off the ground. As even before the collecting of these separate countries into the empire, the United Kingdom and Japan were already world leaders in off-world colonisation and technological development. Aside from just holding the most territory, the Empire also possessed the most advanced terraforming, transports, weaponry 
and defensive technologies, largely provided by Wayland Industries and the Yutani Corporation, but also the member states that realised that pooling their resources would make them an incredible, powerful force to be reckoned with. After the Yutani Corporation bought out Wayland Industries in 2099, the newly emerged Wayland Yutani were able to focus their directives. They bought out many smaller businesses and companies, which only added to their resources, wealth, and control over every industry sector imaginable. This merger was largely driven by the Empire's own territorial holdings, as Wayland Industries represented the United Kingdom's most successful mega corporation, and Yutani, that of Japan's. And as these two countries were member states, and more so figureheads of the Empire, they presented a united front, and so it was prudent for their mega corporations to reflect that. At the dawn of the 22nd century, a new dangerous threat had appeared on Earth. It came in the form of the technophobic cult known as the Monastic Order. During the 2100s, their numbers had grown large enough and their order organised enough to strike at the technological presence on Earth. The order would systematically use EMP or electromagnetic pulse weaponry to disable large metropolitan areas of Earth as a statement on their beliefs. Beliefs that wished the destruction of all advanced technologies and a return to a more simplistic way of living. The order led by the man named uh, St. Thomas eventually created a powerful computer virus known as the New Plague Virus that destroyed billions of dollars of technology and software infrastructure around the planet. Information banks, credit unions and transstellar corporations all suffered massive financial damages due to this virus, and after gaining even more confidence and more resolve from their abilities, they eventually went as far as to detonate low-yield nuclear devices in areas of high technological activity and likewise large populations. These terrorists, while being phenomenally successful, were eventually hunted down and arrested for their crimes in a joint effort between the Three World Empire and the United Americas. Deeming the Order a global threat, the Empire decided to have the low-ranking members all captured, detained and imprisoned, awaiting interstellar transport off-world to an isolated prison facility by a joint task force. Whilst the higher level members of the Order were set for capital punishment. However, none other than Wayland Jutani Corporation manipulated the situation by buying off the judges involved with the sentencing of the leaders of the Order. Specifically that of St. Thomas. After enough money had moved, the monks were left in the hands of Wayland Jutani, under the guise that the company would transport and imprison them in an isolated off-world station. The motivation for the company being uh, to simply make a profit, or to gain further dominance over space. How do you ask? Well, by keeping the creator of one of the most powerful computer super viruses alive, it meant that they could potentially get their hands on a similar virus. To use against rival companies or governments during a time of heavy cyber warfare. And now they had its creator in their grasp, St. Thomas, the order was placed by Wayland Jutani on a class 5 station habitation sphere of Archeon, and allowed a decent amount of freedom. Wayland Jutani would have a near constant access to Thomas for their research purposes here. As the company took more and more of Thomas's time, the order was instead led by an abbot, along with an older model android called Brother Anthony. We are unsure of how much information, cyber weapons and warfare tools Wayland Jutani was capable of creating with the assistance of St. Thomas, but I think what we should take away from this is that Wayland Jutani and the Empire potentially have some very dangerous cyber weapons to use against rival companies or governments in the end. Nevertheless though, Thomas eventually died and their interest in Archeon was over. They moved away from the colony and allowed them to live out the rest of their days on the station. In the 2120s, the Jahaji system was colonised and mined heavily for its resource richness. However, in a worrying move by the uh, UA, it was annexed into their territory and taken over by the UA in the 2150s. This being one of the first of a beginning trend of passive aggressiveness between these two powerful federations. 
In the year 2152, the Empire, alongside the European Union, were able to lease the Fiorina 161 mining facility in order to transform it into a Class C work correctional penal colony. This prison was notorious for double Y syndrome sufferers and was a large part as to why the facility was converted in the first place. As the double Y syndrome disease spread more and more throughout the galactic population and more so the Empire, the double Y sufferers presented an ever-growing threat for people of the Empire, as they were prone to violence and even more than that, of the sexual variety. The Empire decided a mass imprisonment of these dangerous individuals was the only fast and easy solution to the problem. And so, that's what Fury became, a dumping pit for the villainy of the Middle Heavens, and DY sufferers in turn. And while this patch-up job worked in the short term, by the year 2175 the political climate was changing, and a complex like Fury was no longer seen as acceptable. With the closure of these facilities on Fury, it saw a very large amount of its uh, company staff uh, leave the facility, with only a couple of prisoners and staff remaining to keep the facility semi-operational. As of the year 2179, the planet Fury 161 housed a complement of 22 inmates, with three Wayland yutani contracted custodians. The remaining inhabitants lived within underground sections of the foundry facility. Rarely did they uh, venture to the surface as the industrialization of the planet had pushed the climate from uncomfortable to nearly completely inhospitable. The Lena 349 occupation is an interesting one. Lena 349 is an empire colony and had begun to see the cracks of rebellion within their own population. Previously experienced by previously experienced by governments like the United Americas. The UA, by the request of the Empire, was asked to step in and help their allies. A revolt begun on the world, with rebels putting up a good fight. However, they were no match for the Colonial Marines alongside the Royal Marines Commandos. However, to the Empire's disdain, the UA insisted on maintaining a military presence on the planet for future security and insurance, even after the insurgents had ended. Had the UA begun to overstep their bounds? Until now, they had maintained many valuable contracts and treaties with the Empire. And while obligated to help defend our Three World Empire worlds, an ongoing UA occupation of Lena 349 was worrying to say the least. From now on, both sides would keep a watchful eye on the movements and colonisation attempts of the other. By the end of the 2170s, tensions were high on the frontier of space, however things seemed to be mostly quiet. Until July of 2179, when the colony of Hadley's Hope stopped transmitting to Wayland Jutani. Wayland Jutani requested that the UA send the United States Colonial Marines Force to investigate, and so the UA sent a small group of Marines aboard the USS Salako, along with a civilian consult and a Wayland Jutani representative to protect the company's interests on LV-46. The mission was to find out what happened and verify the stories of Alan Ripley of a potentially hostile xenomorph creature, found on the moon by her and her crew. However, instead of getting answers, the UA lost an entire squad of remote. However, instead of getting answers, the UA lost an entire squad of Marines. The colony of Hadley's Hope was nuked, and any information they could retrieve from this mess travelled off with the USS Salako, which is still missing to this day. Suspicions were raised towards Wayland Jutani, and the UA's distrust of their allies had begun. Whilst the two held many important business dealings in high importance with each other, recent events had seen the disappearance of numerous USC MCs, aside from the Hadley's Hope incident. Recon battalions had begun to piece the puzzle together, and evidence was beginning to point towards Wayland yutanis involvement in shady organisations and operations that go against the UA and their jurisdiction. This has put even further strain on the relationship between the UA and the Empire. During the year 2179, the USCSS Salako was on its return journey to Earth, carrying with it survivors of the Hadley's Hope incident. 
During its pass by, there was an emergency jettison caused by an electrical fire aboard, and the crew members were ejected via a Type 337 EEV. Ellen Ripley survived the ordeal and was subsequently rescued by an inmate of the facility, Dr. Clements. She was taken to their facilities and treated for her wounds. After a xenomorph parasite got free, the Weyland Jutani Company became informed of its presence and made quickly to go and retrieve their specimen. Arriving on Fury aboard the vessel the USCSS Patna, company representative Michael Bishop attempted to have Ripley see his version of reason and promised that if she came with them, then they would be able to remove the chest burst of parasite from her body and she could go free and live out the rest of her days. She inevitably chose to take her own life. In the aftermath of it, Wayland Jutani and the Empire had lost a very valuable asset. Sadly, things have only continued to grow worse on the frontier as the space station known as Anchor Point was destroyed in the same year in a reactor meltdown by unknown causes. Little is known of the incident, however the UA's suspicions fall defaultly on the UPP or Wayland yutani and the Empire by association. Throughout the 2180s, several more Earth-based countries such as India, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Kenya, Fiji and several developing countries would be absorbed by the might of the Empire, becoming its newest member states. In the year 2182, all was not well in the outback. Australia, being part of the Empire, became disillusioned with it after suffering a massive food shortage. These events led to an uprising called the Food Riots against the Empire that ended tragically with a nuclear strike on the country's capital in Canberra. The events that followed have not yet been documented. The Empire's history has been a long and prosperous one. What makes the Empire so powerful in a way is Weyland yutani but is the company starting to become their undoing? What is to come next for this space-faring superpower is currently unknown. But considering that the Alien the RPG is still set for two follow-up expansions, I'm sure we are all hoping we will get more on the Empire as the timeline progresses. And when and if we do, I'll be covering all the lore for you guys here on the channel. Before I go, I wanted to let you know about the Acheron Colonial Marketplace, the one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merch. Here you can pick up shirts, hoodies, mugs, phone cases and more. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other videos would you like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions, please leave them in the comments or contact me through Twitter or on the Project Acheron Discord. If you enjoyed, please leave a like and share this video. And if you want to really help see this channel thrive and grow, as well as gain a bunch of awesome rewards for yourself, consider becoming a patron like Christopher, Ambrosia, and Danny of the Project Acheron Hive. I hope to see you all here again very soon, but until then, this is Project Acheron, signing off.